Okay, so this represents you. Young, innocent, a lamb before the slaughter. The slaughter of JavaScript. So, um, I'm kind of approaching this from the idea that, um, oh, here we go, the JavaScript unicycle. From the idea that you're new to programming, we're kind of like in day zero of day zero web development, where day negative one was you installed Linux, right? So here we've got this sexy unicycle with a jetpack, basically, right? But that'd be kind of dangerous to ride. Likewise, JavaScript is kind of sexy, but it's also kind of dangerous. It's got a lot of misfeatures that look cool to some people, like the kind of people that like coding with their pants off or that... Uh, are ninjas, rock stars, whatever, right? But really, what we want is something a little bit more like this. And luckily, JavaScript has that built in, but you just don't know it. So um, let me skip straight to what I'm talking about. Go to valid JavaScript program.js, search for that. And this first hit here comes up is me. So this example that I'm about to show you came about as a result of me watching a friend of mine learn to code. Um, she wrote stuff that looked kind of like this, where um, this should have been a var declaration, but she missed some commas and some uh, semicolons and put things in the wrong place. And just this represents other mistakes that you can make with JavaScript. Like this is a valid program, but it has lots of errors in it. It's not logically valid, it's just syn uh, syntactically valid. And the problem with that is that there's, there's a dissonance between the program that you write and the program that actually runs. Right, so this this is more similar. This is kind of a loose interpretation, but this is more similar to the program that actually will run when what you write is this. And if you just take a look at the two, they're quite different in terms of what you would intuitively expect as somebody new to programming. So um, basically, what I'm teaching you how to do here is to put your training wheels on. Right? So regardless of whether you think you're going to be an awesome code ninja or not, whatever, start with the basics, start writing JavaScript that's good. So to demonstrate um, some of what I'm talking about, I'm going to go to jshint.com and I'll just paste in this valid code that, um, well, first let me just show you how valid it is. So I will go here to let's see tools and uh, JavaScript console and I'll go ahead and paste in this program and I'll run it and there are no errors um, and now I will put it in this JS hint, JS hint which is a, a code checker and I will click lint and then it tells me basically every single line has some sort of error on it. Okay, so um, obviously if you're writing code this process is too slow. You don't want to be copying your code into this online tool and then running that um, because then like I always say the the dearth of discipline and vigilance is the breeding grounds for popularity. So if it's difficult to do this process and it's easier to do it wrong, then you know you end up doing the wrong thing, right? So I want to show you how to make it easy. So I'm going to go to nodejs.org and I'm going to click on install and that's going to download, I think this is downloading the binary package for Ubuntu. Um, so I'm going to go into the terminal and go into downloads, I think it is. Yep. And 
unpack this so you can see what's in it. And okay, it looks like this was the source file. So I'm going to go instead to downloads. Um, we can install the source file, it just takes longer, and I don't want to take a long time. I think I'm running a 32 bit version. Let me see. Okay, I'm running a 64 bit version. So I'm going to get the Linux binaries. I'll say copy link address, and then I'll just use wget um, to download it that way. Okay. Now. check here that one has the bin inside of it great so this is what I'm going to do I'm going to run that on tar again so tar is for well it's just basically like a zip file um, and then X means extract V means verbose and F means specify the file so the file that I'm trying to extract verbosely is this uh, Linux bins file and I'm going to extract it to user local. Um, the dash capital C means to change to that directory when extracting. Okay, and I need to first actually first I need to sudo chone dash capital R backtick, which is up here by the tilde key, except we're not pressing shift. Who am I? Um, so that this will work no matter who you are, even if you're not cool AJ86, as I am, as seen there. Um, and then user local. And type in my password, even though you don't see it, it's typing. Oops. All right, that worked. And now I'll just hit up a few times and try this again. And now if I type no dash dash version, if I get lucky, uh, let's see, I'm going to try control shift T to open up a new window. Hmm, that's weird. User local bin. Hmm, how odd. What did I miss here? Ah, okay. I see what I did wrong. So I'm actually going to do move user local bin node. Well, our sync dash a user local bin, and then I'm putting these brackets so I can specify more than one directory at a time. So bin lib share. Um, to user local slash okay and now I'm going to delete user local node which should only have three things that I didn't copy changelog license readme okay good now if I do node dash dash version great I can see that I've got the right node version also I can now do npm install dash g js hint so node runs JavaScript, JS hint is the JavaScript checker. Okay. And if you get a permissions error, it's because you didn't install it the same way that I did. Um, you didn't first change the permissions on it, the, the sudo chone thing. Um, also, I'd like to note that if you're using Mac or Windows, the installer is simpler. Um, they provide the native mac.pkg and the native windows.msi whereas with Ubuntu they don't provide the native .deb um, and the one that's provided in the, the uh, Ubuntu Software Center is too old to use so um, this process is a little bit longer but you know not my much it's no big deal you're learning to become a programmer anyway so put your pants on okay and I might pause the recording while this installation takes a few minutes to finish 
Okay, so that installation of JS hint finished. Now, if I type JS hint, it runs without an error. Um, I also need to sudo apt git install uh, vim in case I don't already have it. Okay, so it turns out I already have it, so that's fine. So I'm going to vim valid javascript program.js and then I'm just going to copy this program here into here and then I'm going to show you that it will run with node and that if I run jsent on it it gives me all these errors. So the nice thing is now I can run jsent on this file but the problem is still this is too annoying like if you have to do this every time you're not going to do it so next I'm going to show you how to install the Vim plugin um, that will make this easy and automatic. It's called Syntastic. So it's right here. There's some instructions on how to install it down below. So first to install Syntastic, I have to install Pathogen, which is the basically the Vim module manager. And so I'm just copying these three lines all together and uh, actually I'm gonna, oh, pop D, let's see, um, push D tilde slash, go back to my home directory, oops. Okay, now I'm back home. I'm going to uh, paste this and no error output, so it's good. And then I need to tell it to load pathogen in my vimrc, so I might just be creating this for the first time actually, and I am. Um, so I paste that in there, and so now pathogen is installed. Now I need to install Syntastic. So I just copy both of those lines, and then paste them in. Now in the terminal, instead of being control uh, v, it's control shift V. And control shift C is copy by default. Okay, so um, now I'm going to go back to my home again. So push D till the slash. And I'm going to open up that valid JavaScript program. Oh, I guess I must have been in downloads when I created it. So. There we go. I'll open it up and then I'll save the file. And interestingly enough, this wouldn't have happened on Mac actually. Um, so I'll show you what else needs to be done. But interestingly enough, it's already working. Um, if you're on Mac, then what you'll need to do is open up your vimrc and also add syntax on. And that will make sure that Syntastic gets loaded. Uh, so here, it, every time I save, it's going to show me all the errors. So like there's a missing semicolon, um, this return statement returns nothing because the stuff that it's supposed to return is on the next line, and even though normally in JavaScript it doesn't matter if you let an expression continue on the next line with a return statement, it does. So there's just a lot of oddities that are difficult to understand, they're difficult to know when you're inexperienced and even if you are experienced it's difficult to manage that knowledge um, it's just a lot of things to remember so uh, the next thing I'm not actually gonna fix this program right but the next right now but the next thing is um, so you can put at the top of the file there's a lot of different options so if we go to back to JS hint here and click on docs and then click on JS hint options and scroll down a little bit um, there's all these different options so we can say I want my style to enforce camel case um, I want to enforce curly brackets uh, which is definitely a good one to enforce um, and or I want to maybe not enforce certain things all of the options are listed here um, so I'm gonna 
go ahead and just one I know that I like is strict. I'm going to put that to true. And then another one I like is ES5. I'll put that to true. There's no use in not using these since every browser in JavaScript environment, um, all the modern ones, including Internet Explorer, can use them. Um, no sense in not programming for them. So let's see. I'll go ahead and fix this, and then it should still give me an error. Yeah, missing use strict statement. Great. Um, so now I don't want to have to put this in every single file. That's kind of annoying, right? So as it turns out, with JS Hint, you can create a JS Hint RC in your home directory. And I will show you mine if you just Google cool AJ86 JS hint RC should be the first hit right here. And you can just copy and paste mine to get started with. Oh, that was weird. Let me go back. There we go. Um, so I will just copy that. And I do have a little bit of explanation as to why I chose the style I chose or the options I chose. Um, so I'm probably going to need to do set paste and now paste okay great now if I open up this file again I'll get a different set of errors more errors than before so I'll go ahead and get rid of this bit at the top now this does come in useful this this JS hint comment comes in useful when there's like a maybe a particular part in your program where you you need to set an option that's unusual that's not with your general coding style but for some reason you need to set it so remember that but we're not going to use it right now so I'm going to start this off with an iffy an immediately invoked function expression and I've got another tutorial on that that you can look at on my blog and my YouTube channel um, I kind of explain hoisting a little bit and some of these other JavaScript oddities. Um, so hoisting, I'll, I'll explain hoisting in just a second. Ah, I need my smart tab to be right too. So let me set that up in my vimrc. Smart tab equals two, I think. Hmm. Just a second while I look up these options. Okay, these are just some options I like for my vimrc. I'm gonna paste in here. Whoops. Ah. There we go. Okay, all of these ones right here, tab stop, shift tab width, smart tab, expand tab, soft tab stop, um, they all have to do with turning tabs into spaces. And I like my tab key to put in two spaces, so that's what I'm doing here. And then I like uh, highlight search to be on and auto indent to be on. Um, just as a side note, highlight search, if I type in var, uh, slash var and hit enter, it finds it, if I put in slash x, it finds all the x's. And then the other one um, was, for example, when I've got like a function where things should be indented, um, if I open a new line, you can see it puts my cursor indented the two spaces on the new line. Okay, so now I'm hitting V to go in visual mode, and uh, hitting down to select all those, and then hitting shift uh, greater than caret to move everything over. And now I still have all these errors. I'm just going to go ahead and fix them. I happen to know what they are, but if you look down at the bottom, um, you can see, you know, the error message is changing. So variable hoisting means that even though it looks like I'm declaring a variable down below, when the JavaScript gets run, it actually gets declared up at the top. And you can't do a double declaration. Like I had var x down there twice. That should be an error. I don't know why it isn't, but whatever. And then it looks like there's just some extra white space that's in my program for no reason. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that. Missing semicolon. Sorry, I'm going through this stuff fast, but I just want you to get the gist of it. Really? Is that? What's going on there? Oh, there we go. Got rid of those. Cool. Um, and then I guess, really, I could...
comment out these. Since I'm not using them, they won't really be part of the program. OK, so there we go. Now this is a not as terrible program. Still not very useful, but certainly cleaner and um, closer to what actually will get interpreted when the JavaScript runs. Okay, so JS hint just gives you all these error messages. They're not errors like the program can't run, but they're errors where the program won't run as you expect, or it'll be confusing for someone else to read. Um, so again, that's that's the main purpose of this JS hint RC. It's training wheels. It's you know before you get so arrogant that you go around coding with your pants off ninja style. Um, this helps you helps you get into some good patterns that um, will just make you better at what you're trying to do, right? So I also wanted to show back to this example. Um, here's kind of what it would have looked like before. Now this is basically what we've cleaned it up to, similar to this. I think another thing I could do, which would be good to do, would be to hoist this function up because functions actually get hoisted. Um, higher than variables generally, or their assignment happens at the same time. Technical stuff, don't worry about it. But it's it's good to declare your functions before your variables, in, in my opinion. Um, and then here, down below, there's still some dissonance between the code that we wrote and the code that actually runs, but it's, it's less dissonance. It's more similar. Um, and, and that's valuable because then you can learn quicker. And even as an experienced developer, you'll learn so much using JSN, I promise you. Um, and the two things that I want to stress is there's pretty much no point in using JSN if you're not using strict mode. That's really critical. Um, strict mode is the second wheel on the bike kind of thing. Uh, without it, you can make all sorts of errors um, that you just shouldn't be able to. With strict mode on, it turns silent errors into real errors and things that just don't make sense that weren't particularly errors like for example the fact that if you just do something like um, some variable that hasn't been declared XYZ equals 5 or 6 or whatever um, that would become what's known as a global which means that if anywhere else in your program you had an XYZ it could be changed in this part of the program, which would be really weird. Because um, you only want things to be changed when you know that they're changing in the place where you expect them to change. And the case where that actually really happens a lot is with the variable i. But I won't go into that. This is supposed to be short, sweet, and simple, focused on um, getting you up and running with JS hint and being able to iterate through uh, things quickly. So. The last thing is that if you're not using Vim, you might be using Sublime Text 2. It's the other popular editor. So I want to go ahead and just install this real quick. And then um, from there, set it up so that JS Hint works in that as well. So just give me a moment here. Whoops. Push D, downloads, XVF, Sublime. Okay, and let's see, how is Sublime set up here? Hmm, it looks like the way that Sublime is set up, it would be best for me to, let's see, The kind of standard way to do this would be to create a directory opt and then to move sublime text into opt. Whoops, except I'm doing my local opt right now. Um, and then to add that op sublime text to my paths. So I think before I was showing you how to do this type of thing with ZSH, but it's the same with bash, and that's what I'm using right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this change, and I'll 
I'll show you it and um, this is the same way that you would do it if you're using uh, ZSH as well. So go down to the bottom of the file, put path equals dollar sign path and actually in front of that we're going to paste the um, dollar sign home slash oops we do that again dollar sign home slash and then paste that op sublime text to and then put a colon at the end so remove the trailing slash put a colon at the end and so what this is saying is I'll go ahead and put the brackets around this because they're optional brackets but it makes it more clear that that dollar sign home is a variable um, same thing here with the dollar sign path go ahead and do that and I think I need to export this as well so you don't need to worry too much about this this is just bash stuff and ZSH stuff but what it's saying is I'm going to look for this directory and anything that can be run any programs that are in that directory and um, run them from there so now if I do source.bashrc I should be able to run sublime no hmm uh, let me try just running it manually. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder if I mistyped something. Anyway, I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, well, I'll worry about it just a little bit real quick. Because it is important to have these things right. Maybe that should end with a slash. Maybe I should open up another one and try. Weird. Okay, so I don't know why that's not working right now. Um, we can investigate that in another it episode. But uh, so since I have, let me put the most correct way to open this so that it's abundantly clear. That should be tilde slash op slash sublime text to sublime text. I can open this up and then I need to get the sublime text package manager so I'll Google for that sublime text package manager okay and then on Mac it's actually really easy to install I don't know why they don't have a standard deb for Ubuntu but whatever um, so oh yeah I click on install over here I can copy this bit of Python is actually what that is and then here I'm going to hit control and then back tick so I'm going to hold control and hit back tick which is the the same button as the tilde but without pressing shift and then I paste into this little console area here that Python script and it runs it says please restart sublime okay I'm going to cancel out of sublime open it up again rerun it now I can hit uh, control shift P and if I'm lucky yep package control is installed so I can click on that and then from here I can look for sublime linter which is right there okay now that installed so I'm going to close out of this one more time and open it back up probably didn't even need to um, and hit control N for new and I'm just going to go back to that that bad program from before copy it in paste it and then control s to save it as a program I'll just save it in my uh, on my desktop for now so this again will be valid JavaScript program.js okay and then you can see that's popping up with errors again down here it's telling me what the error is and then I'll go ahead and paste in this more valid program or equally valid I guess but more functional more correct um, alright and then save that one and then I can still see there's a couple problems like just this extra space that's was put there accidentally as part of the copy process 
this A that's defined, that's never used. Okay, now I save, I've got no errors. I know that my program is pretty likely to be correct and run the way that I would think that it runs. Oh, and um, probably wouldn't be a bad idea if I go back to this other tab here and let's see, I'll go to my desktop where that program is and I'll run it. And now I can see that it has actual output instead of before where it was just undefined. So there you go. That's um, using JS Hint with Vim and uh, Sublime Text in a nutshell. So this is day zero, lesson zero. If you don't have JS Hint and you go further, you're going to make more mistakes. It's going to be more frustrating. The process of learning needs to be easy. Um, you know, we want to make we want to make the invisible visible. We want to make the errors more apparent so that you get the concepts, you can run through this quicker. Okay? All right. The end. Watch that again in slow motion. <laughs> Sorry, it was a lot of information, but it's good stuff. And one last thing. Even though your friends may think you look like this when you use JS Hint, I'm giving you the fist bump, dude. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.